I really don't know how to say this, but what what makes it bad is that it's annoying, you know? Most people show up on radar then when someone kills you and they don't. It's it's annoying. You know, just just being annoyed by that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't like it. So <laughs> Yeah, as Chip says the R C car. Uh just like <laughs> <laughs> the R C car and the, the Predator missile, just like like I complain about kill streaks and like that, but because they allow people that are just they allow the very worst people in the game, if they're able to get that kill streak, they can kill the very best player. And in order for a game to be perfectly balanced, I don't think a, the very worst player should ever be able to kill the very best player in, you know, just a random ra random circumstance, like a Predator missile, you know? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, Modern Warfare 2, that could be like, all my teammates could be, you know, having a circle jerk right there, easy five kills or something, I'd be, you know, on a random part of the map, and they always go for me for some odd reason. <laughs> yeah. That was that was annoying. It's like, why would you go for me? You know. Yeah, it's just just like I said about the inconsistency. Usually, when I run around, I don't just die, you know, from a predator missile. But when I do, it's so annoying. And you know, that's just I think what takes away from the game. I mean, some of the killstreak ideas, you know, they're in theory, they're not they're not balanced, but they're not you know completely unbalanced because they're incons insignificant. Like UAV, like, you know, that, that, when you get killed because of UAV, you don't notice it, you know, you just think, oh, he was, you know, he was, he, he had a jump on me, he deserves that kill, but when you get killed by a Predator missile, you know, you know, you know that that's what killed you, or an RC car, and I think that's what makes it most annoying, so, yeah, back to Death Streaks, I think, um, I think Juice is probably the, like I said before, I think is the, the best one out of all of them. Most fair. Mm -hmm. Revenge could be bad if you're if if you're one of those players that has everyone on a death streak. Then then you're showing up on everyone's I think radar. I think you're going to be hating that one quick. No, uh, we'll see. I wonder if it I wonder if it shows up on the radar if you're up in a chopper. <laughs> if it shows you on the ground after you get your kill with a chopper, that'd be bad. <laughs> that would be so annoying. Like I mean, in Modern Warfare 2, say you're going for a nuke or something, and they and it shows you on the radar because you killed someone from the chopper. That would that'd be annoying. Yes, it would. And then of course hollow points. This is one of those ones that doesn't really, like 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 it's kind of like UAV where you get killed by it and you don't notice that it was that that killed you. So it's not as a, it's not directly annoying, although it is unbalanced. It's kind of like the stopping power versus juggernaut argument that people said that you know juggernaut was so bad, but stopping power had no problem when they were essentially the same thing. Um, I'm not even sure why they even include death streaks. To be honest, I mean, I just don't get it. They they're just trying to reward people that aren't having a good day. I guess I don't know. It seems to be the trend lately. They want to give people. Uh, rewards for doing bad, <laughs> or it's, or <laughs> I could word that differently and say, for the noobs. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. We'll I have to see how they all play out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think they'll be too bad. These, these three, I think, will still be very annoying when you die by them, like when you're about to get a kill streak. But the rest of them, I don't think, will be too bad. Ultimately, I think some will be annoying, but I don't think they'll be as annoying as Painkiller. Oh, nothing can be as bad as Painkiller, because it happens so often. And that so right often. there is a step forward, yep. to some degree. <laughs> yep, I mean, it, it's... <laughs> Painkiller was worse than Gears of War 3's spawn protection. You know, you know, you start shooting at someone from spawn, and, oh, it's just, that's just bad. Especially when there's only, like, two spawns in the game. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but we won't get on that. <laughs> Okay, so then we got kill streaks, and I'm gonna that's a different game. <laughs> I'm gonna compare these kill streaks to the last games, and I guess ideally I want to compare it to the ideal game with kill streaks, and that would be uh, what Call of Duty Two. <laughs> that they had the ideal kill streak set up, which was nothing. You got you got no you got no rewards for getting kills, so your only incentive to get more kills was because you wanted more kills for you and your team. And I think that's most balanced. I don't think you should. I think you should always have a balanced playing field. 
and never never give someone an advantage because they're doing bad or because they're doing good. And that's just, you know, my philosophy with game balance. Well, that's the ideal setup. Right. Is that it's an even playing field for everybody. But see, the thing the thing is, though, with Death Streaks, they try to even out the, the result. I don't want to even out the result. I want to even out the beginning. You know, I want everyone to be on the same, you know, I want the game to be an even, even playing field. But then let people with skill rise over people without it. But what they do with death streaks and with kill streaks to a degree is that they kind of try to predict the winner. They kind of try to force the winner. Do you have a list of the game types? Because I want to. I know they have bare bones, but I want to see if I don't like, know. Black Ops had bare bones classic, or you know, it had a couple others. I don't have the playlist. And, no. No, oh, no game types have been released yet. I mean, I haven't seen them anywhere. I can tell you what they probably will be. That would be, that'd be interesting, though, to know what's in there. Headquarters, what is there? Domination? Sabotage? We know that new one called uh, Kill Confirmed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that that's something we should actually talk about, because I haven't, we haven't mentioned it at all, but Kill Confirmed would be a very good spin on Team Deathmatch, I think. Well, it makes it interesting. Just say when I played the Crisis 2 demo, and that's kind of where they got the idea was to get your your kill streaks in Crisis 2. You actually had to collect dog tags from a kill. Oh, that's cool. So, I think it'll be pretty interesting. Some people are saying, "Oh, it's just gonna be a camp fest," but you have to get the dog tag to get points to win. So, I mean, you know, you actually if you kill somebody sooner or later, you're gonna have to go for that dog tag. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be pretty interesting. That, I mean, Team Deathmatch is basically a useless mode as far as I'm concerned. If you want to play, you know, in a competitive fashion, because in Team Deathmatch, the guy that's sitting in a random corner with a sniper rifle is just as useful as the guy that's running around. I mean, in other game modes like, like you know, Domination or Sabotage or something like that, the guy running around is actually helping his team. And the guy sitting in the corner is not. But in Team Deathmatch, the guy sitting in the corner is, you know, essentially doing the same thing. So well, That's kill... why objectives are good, because it gives incentive to right. be on the move. And what Kill Confirm does is it adds an objective to Team Deathmatch, but still keeps it, you know, like Team Deathmatch. So people that like Team Deathmatch will probably like Kill Confirmed. But at the same time, it'll allow... It, it, it'll stop the people that are sitting in the corner from contributing as much. And it could lead to some interesting moments. Like, say you get, like, you know, you kill three three people in a row, and you're like, oh, there's three dog tags right there, and you're about <laughs> yeah. to collect them, but then you get dropped. And oh, then you know, they collect your dog tag, and then they pick up their teammates so your team can't get them. Yeah, I think yeah. there's going to be a lot of interesting moments. There's going to be, I, I, I'm calling it right now, there's going to be several YouTube clips of people getting, like, a three-piece or something and then losing all of them. <laughs> <laughs> or, or there's probably know, gonna be some funny things out there. Like they kill the like five people, and that one dude just freaking kills yeah. them. Yeah, there will be there's, there's gonna be a clip of someone saving like five of their teammates' dog tags all in one spot. <laughs> That'll be funny. It has an interesting dynamic, and I'm actually looking forward to trying it. Yeah, yeah, but it's a, it's just adding an objective to team deathmatch. It's making team deathmatch more interesting. So that's always a good idea, as far as I'm concerned. No, oh, it's definitely welcomed. Okay, so what was I talking about earlier? As far as uh, the kill streaks being unbalanced, um, there's definitely degrees of that in UAV and a big deal. Care package is. I don't like care package as much because it's random. You know, it gives it it gives someone to put, it, it makes four kills potentially turn into what seventeen. <laughs> that could be very annoying. But it it re it could you know it could possibly lead to rewarding bad players. Oh yeah. Like well, you said it's random. Yeah. Some some you know do camping in a corner gets like four kills or points or whatever to get the care package and he calls it in and he gets like an AC one thirty. When you know he didn't even really deserve that AC one thirty. He just camped, got that care package, and because of that care package he got a decent kill streak. I've never been a fan of care packages. Yeah, Bad idea from the start. It's just it just adds more randomness into it and makes it more like a poker game, I guess. <laughs> and make, no, it should it gets there should never be randomness in a shooter. Yeah, that's if yeah if you want to make a shooter balanced, you have to remove everything that makes the game unbalanced. 
as hard as it is to understand. You you want to remove everything that's random in the game, and you want to remove everything that doesn't keep the playing field level. And that's exactly what randomness does. No advantages, no yeah. disadvantages. Randomness gives an advantage to people who are lucky. <laughs> so, you know, in theory, if you play the game a million times, everyone will be lucky an equal number of times. But, you know, that one time when you're unlucky and the other guy is, it just it's just frustrating. And that's yep. you know, the extent that balance goes as far as I'm concerned. That's why I'm probably going to use that that booby trapped uh, care package. Oh yeah. Just so I could just so I could see all those you know <laughs> bad players go for it and get what they deserve. Yeah, that's a, a lot of the casual <laughs> players. That's true. A lot of the people that uh that'll be new to the game will it, love the idea of the care package. It's it's just a random part of the game. And and it'll be really cool to throw an air, air, airdrop trap and just blow people up. <laughs> yeah, that'll be funny. But I kind of like how they added that because it will kind of make people think twice yeah, about it'll stop when they people. see a care package. <laughs> it'll stop people from trying to steal your care package from the other team. I'm sure. Yeah, that, that I, was a very you know that doesn't happen often, <laughs> and I never used it. <laughs> Chip loves this idea of the airdrop trap. He loves it. Well, I don't blame him. I love it too. I mean, I think it'd be funny as hell. Uh, let me see some. So let's address some of the ones that we think will for sure be overpowered. And well, I don't want to say overpowered. I want I want to say unbalanced. And the ones that I say are for sure unbalanced are these two for the low levels. Uh, the IMS is automatically triggered once an enemy gets near it. It's basically like a uh, claymore. Or a bouncing Betty, looks like. And I, that's just annoying. You know, you're just running and then all, and you just die by something on the ground that... I mean, I guess if you use Sitrep Pro, then you should be able to see it. But, you know, that just adds another element to the game. You know, the game's supposed to be real fast-paced, and you're supposed to just run around and shoot people. But when you have to start worrying about checking corners and everything for stuff like this, it just slows down the pace of the game. Makes it more random, and it just, you know, it just brings up that inconsistency inconsistency that I always talk about. And then the Predator Missile's the same way. We've already talked about that pretty much. <laughs> Just dying while your three teammates are over there in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the dreaded Predator Missile. Oh, and then you've got, let's see, Attack Helicopter, Usual AI, Precision Strike, yeah, those are balanced, I think. Straight front, we have to see how it works, as well as Little Big Guard. Little Big Guard looks like it'll be the same thing as an attack helicopter, except uh, it just follows you around. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like one of those small-ass helicopters, though. Yeah, it might might fly lower to the ground and be easier to take down. So, And plus, if, <laughs> if you see that flying around, you know that there's someone underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like the scrambler perk in Modern Warfare 2. You remember how you'd always see that in your radar, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting hotter here. Is that the yep. word? You play hot and cold or whatever. <laughs> I love that perk when people other when other people used it. Just could go towards uh, the scrambler. It's like, oh, I know you're here now. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then we'll see how this one works as well. Take control of the Reaper UAV and pound enemy infantry with a barrage of rockets. Sounds similar to the AC-130, except... I don't know. We'll just see. Assault drone could be very annoying. If it, hey, if all of a sudden you're you're fighting drones instead of humans, that doesn't sound like fun. No, yeah. it doesn't. And then the usual the usual AC-130, the Pavlo, which is AI controlled. The Juggernaut, I don't think will be too big of a deal. I mean, if people want to. I mean, it might be good for some game modes like uh, like domination if you're trying to defend a point. Because, I mean, if you're using a juggernaut from or a defensive... Or capture a point back. Yeah, if you, but I think if you use it from a defensive position, where they can't really get up there and shoot you, that'll be a very yes, good... That'd, that'd be, be pretty so good. <laughs> I mean, if you just sit there and head glitch with a juggernaut, <laughs> with an LMG, oh my gosh, that'll be so annoying. Yeah, I, people would be rage quitting, I guarantee it. I might actually have to use that 
see how it works. That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, glitching is a juggernaut. Mm-hmm.